All right, welcome back to uh, the Crit Hit Wild character review. This week we actually have a new character to look at, so we're going to be able to look at Black Swan, who has just been revealed. Uh, real quick, before we actually take a look at her, I just want to uh, remind everybody that if you're watching this video on YouTube, that uh, we do have a full podcast version that's out on Spotify, Google, Apple, just anywhere you listen to your podcast content. Uh, come give us a listen. Uh, we just, I mean, if you want to, it's four guys just rambling and having terrible opinions on the game. But, yeah, if you want to listen to it, uh, full version is uh, located there. So, come check it out. So, when we do these uh, character reviews, just to remind everyone, we look at their stats to their threat value. We look at their kit. We look how they do in affiliation. And we look at their slash ability. So... Looking at CP81, Black Swan, and the Super Giant Box, we have Black Swan. So she's coming in at uh, 443 defense with six stamps. St shit, the bed. Six stamps, size two, four threat, medium move. She has your standard uh, five dice physical strike um, with the normal power builder with a wild size four push. So pretty good. Move. Uh, that's, that's really important in her card. It's a short push away. Uh, Very good. going into her second attack, she has a range three, five dice, one power cost, I beam. So it has auto incinerate after it's resolved and a wild pierce. So another very, very good ability. Her spender, which I mean, doesn't, this is, uh, one of the probably bigger things on this character's card. It's a range 2, 4 power, 8 dice uh, spender with a wild throw and a hit trigger follow-up. After the attack is resolved, the character may make an I-beam attack without paying the power cost. And the I-beam must target the original target, so whoever you punch with everything dies. And it ignores range and line of sight. So for just a hit trigger on 8 dice you can get a uh, eight dice physical attack with the potential to throw followed by a five dice pierce energy pierce with uh, auto incinerate. So pretty crazy. Uh, she has a two power charge. Uh, so if you're playing any of the characters charge, it's the exact same. Uh, she has a uh, reactive called midnight field. So when she is defending, she can spend any amount of power. So however much she has on her, she can spend it. Uh, during the modify opponent's dice step, and for each power you spend, you can blank uh, one of the attacker's wild. So it's a it's Modoc, but you pay one per wild. So uh, and then she has a one power reactive telepathic suggestion. When this character is attacking, it can use a superpower during the modify opponent's dice step of the attack. If it does, you can reroll an opposing defense die. So it's the spider foe's leadership for for one power. Uh, and it's not once per turn, so you can do it every time she attacks. Uh, finally, she has flight, and she can take the power stone. And then on her flip side, everything's everything's the same. So, yeah. Uh, initial thoughts for for Black Swan. Who who wants to start? Let's we'll yeah. you. We we'll let you yeah. start, Fred. Go ahead. Uh, I I love this. This is great. This is real good. This is right up my alley. Uh, so. Can we talk about that wild throw that's on the spender? Uh, yeah, you're talking about the wild throw that has no size limit? It has no size limit. That means you can throw Dormammu. Yep. That means you can turn Dormammu into a weapon to deal six damage to someone if they don't do good on their dodge roll. That is... That is... He's size five, right? Am I correct? Yeah. 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 Yep, he's size yeah. five. Yeah. So that is... Holy moly! Holy moly. Yep. And she can charge into it. This is this is like It's a lot I, of power. I love, this. I love this. Yeah, it's a lot of power, you're right. You know what she also has? The power stone. That's true. <laughs> uh can anybody pull up Cerebro and tell me what the percentage is to get a wild on eight? Uh, you asked that one. I had the pit ready. Hits ninety three percent. Yeah, that is yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I think it's I mean it's just gravy. I, I think. Gravy. I think that. Well, I think that. 
like you clearly want the throw like the throw can i mean it can kind of make or break uh whether or not like you know you score a scenario 70 it's a 70 percent. okay so 70 and then a 93 so i mean incredible odds for her to be able to get both of her triggers i i mean if you don't get the follow-up it's gonna feel real bad <laughs> so um yeah, the, the throw is after the attack is resolved. I feel like there's probably a chance that you just... Sometimes you just kill the character. So maybe you don't get the throw, but... Oh, uh, okay. Okay. I see. I mean, if the character stays, I guess at the end of the day it doesn't matter. You're not going to get that juicy juicy throw to somebody else, but... It's still great. It's still great. Yeah, no, it's really, I, really good. It, Obviously, it, you want to live the dream, right? And it, have, like one damage left and then you go throw it into something i mean if you're doing this into dormammu he probably lives and then well uh, but it, if let's say he had they have two damage left you throw them into something and then you i beam them yep uh, uh, there's the dream that's i don't the know dream. if that's the dream because then you have to rely on five dice you know you're well if they roll uh roll a bunch of blocks you can just make them re-roll one of them what She's you, great. What do you Why think? Why are you yes. not screaming yes. about what? Fred, Is after everyone... you spent, Fred, after you spent your two to charge and your four for the spender, you have We're... that one left over to make a reroll. We're spending a lot of power yeah. on this deck. Yeah, <laughs> she she has no, uh, she has no uh, short like shortcomings when it comes to like spending power. Like right. she's going to spend all of her power, unless you're really anticipating. Like people gunning her down, and you want to save it for Midnight Field. She has yeah. no issue spending down every single turn. She has a lot of fun stuff to spend her power on. Yeah. So, I mean, the this problem is, is she cannot spend the power offensively and defensively. She's going to have to choose. Mm. And people are going to pick offense because yeah. it's fun, and then she's going to die. Yeah, Not I'm... that I think she's bad. I, I like her a lot. I just, she's either going to live forever and not do much, except support. Like, Incinerate's really good. I, th I think this a take push... is wrong. <laughs> in, <laughs> keep... in, in, incinerate's good, push is good. Like, she'll support, but she won't be killing anything. Really. And she lives forever. Or she has major output and then dies. But that flexibility is nice too. Yeah. What do you think, Brandon? Are you uh, more, are you on Fred's? Are you more excited like Fred, or are you a little bit more? I, I I'm 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 in a weird spot because this is the four we get right after they gave us the shit fucking box, shit fucking sandwich that was Electra. Like, hey. <coughs> What happened to the Brandon from the Discord chat yesterday? <laughs> yeah, I thought she was one of the top three fours. Gosh, she wouldn't be a top three four if there were only two fours in the game. All right, because <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I love this character. I, I, she does exactly what she's meant to do. Like to Brad's point, like I, I think you choose offense uh, most of the time, and I think that's fine. I think that's what she's there to do. I think that's what she does really well. There are going to be scenarios where you just you whiff on a roll, and then she just dies. Uh, the only I, the only concern I do have is that the six stam on the front side, especially if you take that if you take the power stone, if you don't get a big attack off, there's a scenario where she might just die before she gets to do anything, and then. She gets really only one good turn on her backside, um, and then she's probably gonna just die again uh, because you're gonna use all. You're probably gonna use all ten of the power on your first on your attack if she say she has ten um, on her flip side. Like you're probably gonna do everything dies twice, and I mean that's probably gonna do a lot of damage. And I I think that's probably that could be worth it. There's a scenario with everything dies, uh, she could kill three or four models in one activation. Uh, mm. So that's magical Christmas land. I mean, if you, if you're playing against a really wide roster of threes that have a lot of five, five even four and five health with threes and twos, and then you can throw something 
especially like Juggernaut. Like you throw you everything dies if you can go into Juggernaut, almost kill him, and then throw him into someone. That's a lot of that's five going at someone. If they don't roll anything, they're probably dead. Then you can follow up, kill Juggernaut, and you can do it again to someone else. Uh, I, I mean, obviously, but I think three is very reasonable, especially with two character throws. If you can hit the same character with the throw twice and four attacks. I, I mean, I think three is very reasonable, and I think that might be worth it. I the I we talked about it a little bit last night. I actually I like her without the power stone and affiliations that um, give her power for free just to save you on that one threat. Um, I'd like one her threat's a lot. A lot. Yeah, and it, she, it, she it, gets a lot out of that, but it is a lot. Yeah. It changes the math and what you're going to list build and stuff. Again, I, I think she's uh, she's going to fit into a lot of affiliations splash wise. I think she's a really good uh, good modeled character. Like I said, my biggest beef with her is just the fact that for whatever reason, this is the like I feel like this is very much how uh, Electra could have been designed. And yeah, give her yeah, eye lasers. Uh, well, besides that, <laughs> like just like the builder seems very much like Electra-ish. Besides, like maybe the push not being size four. Um, I mean, Electra technically has like she doesn't have a builder, but she has a better strike attack than. than well, I mean, I guess it's our, if you're talking about for murder, she's better. The the size four push is insane. Yeah. So, I, she's got a lot of, this card specifically, she's got a lot of stuff um, that's kind of, that sticks out on her that it's like, oh, you don't really read it the first time you go through, and you're like, oh, oh, that too? Oh, that too? Like, I, I've read this card three or four times now, and I think every time I'm like, oh, she she also does that? I'm like, oh, that's not... Yeah, I mean, it's very busy. I, I think I'm sitting with you, Fred. Like, I'm, I think that she has a lot to be excited about. <laughs> Uh, four four three like so four four three, and six Tam. If Angela's taught me anything, it's that, that uh, it does fuck all. Doesn't like, do a damn thing. It, it, like, yeah, like it's like four four three is like good. It's good on a four threat. I think on a, like with a four threat character, four four three is exactly what you want to see. It's probably actually a little bit more. A well, no, it's probably in the middle. Uh, six and six on both sides is, again, perfectly good. It's what you want on a four threat character. Yeah, it's um, right about average for so, health. That's my that's my issue with the power stone is that six six at five threat is at the bottom of those five threat characters as far as Stan. It's concerned. Yeah, I mean that's the thing is that she has so much to spend power on if you're not taking her in like an A force. Or you're not taking her, and I mean, I guess dark dimension. Dark, yeah, dark dimension. Yeah, she she's good in dark dimension, uh, but she needs. I I think if you're playing anything that can do that, she's fine at four. And I think for her kit, it's it's good at four. I think if you play her anywhere else, you're probably slapping the power on her, and that's one thing I appreciate about her design space is that. Like Corvus, her... Corvus is a four threat character, but really he's not. Really he's a five threat character. And he's a five threat character because you've been saying not to take reality on him. Like he's he's amazing with reality. They've done a good job with her, of giving her very I think reasonably costed superpowers, and then giving her access to the power stone to make you be able to do guaranteed one of these things every turn, right? Like, you can do some of this stuff every turn. Uh, probably several abilities every turn, actually. So, And she's not the worst five with the Power Stone. Like, no, she's better than, I would say, some of a, a good... Like, if you ranked her and just baseline said, you know, she generates three power at the start of her turn, like Hulk, and she's just a five-threat character, like, I think that she's better than a lot of the... Uh, uh, probably at least a third of the field that we have of five third characters in the game. Like she's vastly, yeah. Like she's pretty, she's pretty fucking good. So are we can and we're gonna count Corvus as a five threat character? Yeah, he's also probably better. Like he, well, okay, so, so he's uh, so well, he has to be better than five five threat characters. I, I don't know. So Corvus actually is a little bit different 
because you like when you're taking him, you're taking him in a package deal, right? So I don't know that that's a it's a hundred percent a fair comparison, like because he's always taken with Proxima. So right there, you're looking at a threat that you're spending, and then him by himself without Proxima and without like Thanos and like Death Decree and uh, be able to cosmic portal him and stuff like that. Uh, I think that he's kind of in a own weird like fucking pocket dimension to talk about when it comes to Corvus. But for her at five threat, I think that she needs very little support. Like I think it's that fourteen she... to fifteen, so she still has to be and to be a third better, she still has to be better than five of the five threat characters. Let me let me yeah. let me look up yeah. characters here. So you've got Thor, threat. Witch, hold on. Loda. Hold on, hold on, let me get in there. She's better. Okay, so she's she's better than Jean Grey. Okay. She, yeah. So we'll start, we'll start there. She's better than Black, the... She's better than Black Bolt. She's better than Cassandra Nova. I'm willing. Yeah. No. I. Uh, it's a tricky one. I'm going to come back to that. I think that she is better than. She's better than Thor. Ugh, I yeah, don't no, mean, I don't no, mean. yeah, she, she is, she is, she I is. Think she's better than Thor. I think that she's better than Thor. Uh, and then uh, the the health difference on Thor. Thor rolls the same defense, has two more health, and can hit arguably as hard. I think that she is. I think that she's better than Thor. And he has a throw on his. He has a size four throw on his builder. <laughs> yeah. He does. Yeah, he, I don't know. He, he does have nope. a size order. And I would probably say that she's... It's tricky. Like, I want to say that she's better than Angela. I do think that she's probably better than Angela. If Ooh. not for that cheeky, Angela like can win, like go and take a middle extract and then leave. Angela's long movement and extra health, I think it was... I still think that she's probably better. I'm torn between saying that she's better than Angela or... Or Doctor Strange, like OG Doctor Strange. Ooh, ooh. I, I, I mean, I'm not willing to wade in on this subject. I don't know enough about these these models to say who's better and who's better. I just know that I think she's great. She's capital G great. No, she's good. She so she has. Uh, I think to Brandon's point, she has uh, pretty. She has good stats. What you want for fourth threat. The stats lack a little bit when you compare her and you make her a five threat. I think that's, that... that's the only point I was trying to make. I just think, I mean, as far as fours are concerned, I think she's probably just like on paper, she's probably like top four in the four threat range. I think it's hard to compare to the fives because I do think they hold a little bit more weight. Even Black Bolt, because um, I mean, once you flip Black Bolt, he's real hard to kill and he's going to he's going to beat you up. You never flip Black Bolt, though. Yeah. And without um, all you've got for him to, like, flip himself? Even his range four, five dice, pierce. Assist, I mean, he's got good stuff. I mean, the worst thing about him is literally just, like, his leadership sucks. <laughs> like, and Damn. if focus power cost one less, it would be... I don't think we'd be having this conversation about Black Bolt. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's, yeah, but... he's he's not good. But um, yeah. yeah, no, her her uh, her threat, her stats are are pretty decent. She has an amazing kit. I, I think that we can all. I mean, we're all in agreement that her kit is like really good, right? With like everything that she has going on. Yes. Uh, I splash ability. I think that she is pretty splashable i don't know that there's any affiliations that's gonna complain to get an unlimited size throw and a wild push that can deal with size four i think that all affiliations you know want that i think that both of those things under kit are pretty incredible uh, i think that like if you take her fred plays a lot of spider foes if you take her in spider foes you can goblin reroll. And then also telepathic suggestion reroll and reroll two opposing defense dice, and then attack one more time, and then also uh, pay one and make them reroll again. So she's 
uh, defense dice, like re-rolling machine. And yeah. like if people are rolling like three or four dice for defense, they're probably getting two successes. And if you roll, re-roll both those successes, like in a turn, she can push an insane amount of damage through. So I would like to clarify that you're not saying she should be played in every affiliation. You're just saying that she could be played in every affiliation. I'm not saying that she can. I like. I don't know that she goes into every single affiliation. I'm saying that I think that all, none of the affiliations, if you splash her, would complain about anything on her kit. Like I just, I just needed because the way you said it originally, it seemed like you were saying that every affiliation should take her. No, 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 no. I, I fundamentally incorrect. Yeah, I don't think that. No, I don't think that she's going to go into every affiliation. Like I don't think you need to splash her into everything. Like she's she's not like so broken that that's uh, she needs to go in. But I, I think didn't want that you to yell in our comment section. <laughs> Thank you. You're looking out for me. I think that though, what is on her kit? Like if you chose to splash her, I don't think that like any affiliations. Like, like, I think that she can benefit every affiliation with what she has going on, so. Uh, yeah, and then, so her splash ability is pretty high. I Jury's out on whether or not she actually can see play in Black Order. Uh, I think that she's good. She's probably going to be five threat in Black Order. And, I mean, you're already taxed for threat if you're if you're taking her. And if you have five threat to spend, I don't like. I still, if the game plan is to attrition, I still think that you probably go for Corvus because he is sturdier. But uh, what if you don't take Thanos? So that's that's where the jury's out, right? Because if you're not Thanos, it's like if you ask me my two cents, I think that Thanos is the strongest character in the game. Like, he's probably... Like, two Jim Thanos, to be specific. Spoiler for a future review. Uh, yeah, I guess. Uh, so, uh, two, two Stone Thanos is, in my opinion, like, the number one model in the game. Um, so, I, I don't know why you... Like, currently, I don't know why you would still take her. I don't think that you would. However... If you're not bringing Thanos because they have a leadership card that they can play on other stuff, then I think that just does a complete 180, and then she's very much in the conversation. Because if you're playing 16, and or, or you have 16 threat with Corvus Proxima, Two Stone Thanos, I think that you just kind of always stick with that, and you build from there. But if you don't take Thanos. You could play like her, Corvus, Proxima, make one of them your leader, and then play like a two threat at 15, like a Gam or something like that. And then I think that she's like really in the conversation. So I don't know. I think until we see what that card does kind of dictates how much play she sees in, in affiliation. Yeah. I think we have to be a little tempered on that. I think that uh, uh, when we get to the next section of this, that's a that's a big thing that weighs her down for me because if that's not a leadership card, I'm not sure you ever really play her in her only affiliation that she's going to be affiliated in. Uh, she could be that's... Cabal. God, I hope not. That's dumb. I'm Cabal. pretty sure she's been on the Cabal. Cabal. On some version of the Cabal. Now she would Cabal. be. She she probably do Cabal some good. I think they would like to have her. I think they'd like to have anything. <laughs> You're not wrong. If I can play uh, her Modoc and, and Red Skull at 14. She has been a member of the Cabal. I just double checked. Well, this should probably be in there. Everybody else is. They uh, let anybody in. Okay. So... Rob Bank one time. Go ahead, you in. <laughs> so, uh,. So, looking at her, uh, anybody can correct me if I'm wrong. I think just to kind of recap what we're thinking, uh, decent decent stats, like nothing to gush over, but it, she's not bad by any means. She's, she's pretty well what you kind of expect. Uh, an amazing kit. I'm not saying she's not playable in affiliation currently, but until we get a little bit more information, we're not 100% sure. 
on uh, her affiliation, like how often you're taking her in affiliation. And then her splash ability is is pretty pretty decent. Like she could probably go in several places and be pretty happy. And I think a lot of places would be happy to kind of have her in. So, and in a an affiliation that can give her power, uh, you probably can squeeze by taking her as a four. Uh, but anywhere else, I mean, you're probably I mean, you're probably stapling the power stone to her because she has so much fun stuff that she can do with it. I mean, that just okay. that opens up so much possibility for her. Like her turn one plays are super interesting because there's multiple paths that you can go. I think she'll really shine in a world where she gets to play as a four threat character that gets extra power. No. So did I have all that correct, or did I did I leave out anything? Yes. Yeah. I just want to mention the first turn play. Fred's gonna love this. So. You move her once, and then you charge into a spender, and then you throw the model into one of their other models, and then shoot it with the lasers. That's t- <laughs> so that was a turn one play. Yeah, yeah. So, so you have to start with six power. <laughs> uh, power stone and inhumans. Yeah. Yeah, you can do it with Inhumans. That's yeah, true. You, Power Stone and Inhumans. Yeah. You, can, you can pull it off. There you go. So, you figured oh, it out. baby. God, you had to be playing <clears throat> a lot of points. I mean, you're uh, starting you off with 10. Models. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, but you got to play at least two more Inhumans. No. Yeah. I mean, yeah. wait, yeah. No. <laughs> no, because you play Black Bolt. You play Black Swan. Okay. And then if you're playing like... Can't 14, play... 14 Threat, you play Ronan. Right? You just play Medusa. That's not or enough. Medusa. But that's not that's... enough people to give her the six yeah. power. Oh, well, yeah. Okay, yeah. No, no. If we're talking about that play, I thought you just meant like taking her in general. Okay. No. I was say that's yeah. the only problem with that is you... You have to you play have... 16. Or up. Yes. Because you can take two three-pointers. Yeah. Easy peasy. All right, so we can get into uh, ranking her really quick, and then we'll kind of wrap up this character review. So, uh, yeah, S S S through F. What are we, what are we thinking for? I guess. You want to let Fred get excited again? Let us lead us off. I guess this one's kind of <laughs> weird because, like, I guess we could kind of say what we think she is, and then yeah. what she is it would, with the power it stone be hot because. Tape. It would be hot take. I like. I'm probably gonna do yeah, what I think she is. Yeah, it would be hot take if we didn't do it. Let's yeah, just go for it. I think what she is at four, and then what she is without a power stone, or with the power stone, if that alters how much better you think that makes her. So go ahead, Fred. Uh, uh so I think that I'm gonna give her an A, and then mm-hmm. an A, uh, for for both of those circumstances, because I love everything here. She plays directly into the way that I like to play. Mm-hmm. Which is just violence. I think she'll and, be really good in Spider Foes too. Yeah, that's what I was like. Uh, the list that I came up with for her is Spider Foes. It's you know, it's it's not to get ahead of myself, but I think that that just switches her on in a way that's really lovely. And I I I I just I just am gushing to play this character on the on the table. I want to see it. I want to see it play out. All right, so A's. What do you think, Brad? Uh, B plus. B plus. And I'm only giving one grade. I don't care for this two grade thing. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Brandon? Um, uh, my thing with her is I I I'm I'm this judgment is based without knowing what those tactics cards are. Uh, without the possibility of a leadership. Her not being able, I, I I just I'm not sure what scenarios you actually ever play her with Black Border, and then you have your affiliations that you're splashing her in, um, like Inhumans would be a good one. Like Inhumans are trash. Like A Force is a good one, and then you're in that same boat. Is she really better than like Angela or some of their other options? I think she's really good in Steve Avengers, um, and then. Going down the leaderships, I think she's great in Dormammu. I think that's almost going to be a must going forward. Uh, I think she 
I, it really sucks, but I think she basically just replaces Carnage and Spider Foes. Um, I don't know. I if agree. You ever, I don't know if you ever play Carnage with Spider Foes anymore. Um, again, Spider Foes not a great affiliation. Um, I, if she's metal. if she's if she's <sighs> yeah, fine. Uh, sorry, go, sorry, go ahead. But and then like Cabal, um, I I think if she's Cabal affiliated, that's a that's a huge plus because I think uh, I like I think I do agree. I think if she's Cabal, I think that's. I mean, you, you had to play Cabal, which kind of sucks, but I think that might make Cabal not like you know bottom like four affiliation in the game. Um, A Force again. I think she's really good in that. I'm not sure how you play her. I, I don't know if you ever play her in Kingpin a Syndicate. Shadowland Daredevil Syndicate, she's probably she's probably pretty good in. Um, You're missing an obvious one, Brandon. X Force. Yeah, Cyclops. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I that did, other I, people can. I specifically excluded her. the affiliations that she should not be played in, like uh, so that other people can like help Cyclops. her do her spender. You know what? If you are playing, uh, if you're playing Cyclops' leadership, sure you can play whatever you want because you don't care about winning um, at all. That's you know what? At that one tournament, like next time that Jason comes up, Brad, I would love, love to get on camera him playing Electra and Cabal like he's been talking, and you play Black Swan and Cy- Cyclops leadership, and just have the absolute I biggest think shit, I win shit fest. Game. Just the biggest <laughs> shit fest that we've ever seen. <laughs> like, I would love to I see. Have, Jared, <laughs> I have one game with Cyclops as my leader. People have won games with Red Skull as their leader. Yeah, so, people... you know, yeah Red Skull's not as bad as you think he is. I think Red Skull's fine. I think it's... The, now, the have I ever... Meh. Red Skull's won. leadership is fine. Red Skull himself kind of sucks. Go ahead. Have I even once ever used Cyclops' leadership? No. But I have one game with him as my leader. Uh, I'm not one to speak for the people, but I feel like the people want to see want to see this go down. Just yeah, I would vote for that happening. Um, I definitely would vote for that happening. I I vote. also vote for for that happening. I vote for that happening. Holy shit, Jason! Right. If you've, you're listening to this. Been... It's it's happening. We got to make it happen. And you're almost on summer break, so you have no excuses. <laughs> yeah, I'm calling you out. I'm like Brad. physically excited. Like <laughs> I'm physically excited to watch the worst game of MCP I've ever seen in my life. So, uh, anyway, sorry, I, we interrupted you. Go ahead. Uh, as in summary to what I was getting at, I think the affiliation she's really good in. The good ver- the good affiliations, it's I think she's an iffy play. Uh, and then the bad ones, you're still playing a bad affiliation, so I'm not really sure how good that is. Um, I'm, I'm going to give her a, a solid B. Um, it feels low, but I, I think all things considered... I feel like this is a model, and I, I want to say this. I think this is a model that could just get lost. Um if she's not, if there's not a leadership card for Black Order, um, I, I just, I do, I think there's just a scenario, like a world where, like, when people play affiliations, it's like, where you have every model to choose from, every model has to have a specific thing, and most of the affiliations that really want to kill stuff have a lot of those models um, already, so mm-hmm. it's kind of like, adding another one might be, it's like, like, so like, in my Syndicate roster, that plays Shadowland Daredevil, it's like, yeah, she'd be really good in that, but, like, you're really looking at, like, a voodoo spot, like, a black cat spot, like, those tech pieces, and she doesn't do that kind of tech. Um, so I, I think it's kind of... And if you want something that just kills something, and you're going to play the Power Stone, just play Hulk. Um, if you're just trying to kill stuff, like, just play Hulk. Like, just... If you're already at 5 threat, and if you can do 6 threat, you just play Hulk, like... I'm not like Hulk's just better than her, I think, in almost any kind of capacity. And that's not a downside on her. Hulk's one of the best, probably three characters in the entire game uh, with his rework. Um, so, I, that, I, yeah, I feel like that's room to improve. I think if that leadership comes in play, I think she's definitely at that like A minus. 
Um, just because a 17 threat Corvus reality Proxima her with a power stone and black dwarf at 17 is fucking terrifying. Yep. The the only way I could see her maybe like you... plus black water tactics cards like yeah no, 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 that's <laughs> she's an absolutely gross piece for I think blood despair which I was talking about last night blood despair uh, if you guys don't know what it is I think it's two or three power. And when you would be dazed, you can pay it, and then you can immediately perform an attack. Three power? Three power, yeah. So you pay three power, you can immediately make an attack, and the card does not specify that you have to hit the character that hit you, so you can hit somebody else, and it doesn't require you to use just like a strike, so you can use a spender. So if somebody dazes her for seven power, which somebody's with power stone and then somebody hitting her like if they get her at the top of the round uh she's gonna have seven power so you can three power blood despair into a four power everything dies and just absolutely either murder the piece that killed you or murder another important piece that is within range so i think that she's uh pretty gross with that tactics card but uh so I like her a lot. I am pretty in love with her kit. I think that she has a lot of interesting and fun things on her card. I don't like she has defensive tech. I'm kind of missing the damage reduction that the rest of the Black Order has, but that would really put her over the top probably. Um, so the defensive tech that she has is good. It doesn't keep her alive. I think it more often than not just makes her annoying. It's so like if you want to get her off a point, characters with attacks, they can't like wild throw you off or wild push you off because you just blank it. So if anything, it just kind of makes her sticky uh, on the board. So, um, sticky. I like stick, it. Sticky, yes. Uh, I mean, you. Brandon kind of hit the nail on the head with like just how the affiliation stuff works. I think whether you take her as a four or whether you take her with a power, the power definitely puts her in like a different bracket for me. But I think with everything that she can do, I still think that she's probably an A tier character. And then if the leadership card can let her be played in Black Order, I think maybe she moves up to an S minus for me. Ooh. But, Ooh. but, I think with like the I thought S and F weren't gonna have pluses and minuses, Jared. Oh, you're right. A plus. Yeah. That's true. We did say that. I forgot. Uh, a you plus. You said that. And that was I... your. That was your. Yeah, that, that was you. I thought it was just. I thought, okay, I forgot. I had another smooth brain moment. We talked about this at the beginning of the cast. That was smooth brain. Uh, I think that she's somewhere between. I think she's probably an A. Uh, and I think if she becomes pre splashable, I think that she's A plus. So. I'll, I'll stick there. She she might be an S with the Power Stone, but I'll I'll leave it at a A plus. So so then we got two A's and two B's. How balanced? I work for it. Me and you, I feel like are really far away because I think she could get lost in like just never seeing play, and you're just like A plus. I A plus has got to be reserved for models you consider no matter what you're doing. I think that and she... I do not think in any capacity she's that model. Like I, I never. I'm never chaos. considering her. I'm never considering her in Kingpin Criminal Syndicate ever. Like See, she's never a model that I ever am thinking I want to play in this. I think, and I think A plus models have to be that consideration for almost anything. But that's just how I view it. I think the S tier models. From... To me, S tier models are the models that you're always considering for everything, right? Like there are a lot of models in this game. Like, I think S tier models are models that you're probably playing one to two of ninety percent of the time. Yeah, and those are the models that like you're always looking at. Other than that, you're you're pretty much looking at like stuff in affiliation, right? Like I think that just with what her kit does, just in this character as a whole, I think that she's an A tier model. Like I think that she's better than. But I think we had different S tier opinions because my S tier was strictly like the top five models, well, the models I viewed as the top five in the game, and I think yours was a little bit larger than mine. So I think this is more. I think it's a little bit more subjective. Subjective. Yeah, I think it's more. Point, but yeah. I sorry. think I, that, I was just kind of explaining that I think our views are a little bit different on the way we're kind of grading. 
where I think uh, you have a little bit higher of a scale and a little bit wider, where mine's kind of a little bit more restrictive. Yeah, but that's, I mean, that's all right. The thing that I think really, well, I think the thing that keeps her also, like, high A tier to me is, I, I've said it before on the cast, but I have just insane value for characters that can move models size 4 or larger. Because with the 1.5 changes, that is, ex- uh, like, it's not easy to find. And it's not easy to find on uh, cheaper models, right? So, like, when you're looking at things that can display size 4, you're looking at, like, Juggernaut Tactics Card, who is a 5 threat character. Like, clearly, both the Hulks can display size 4 characters. So, but they're sixth threat. Magneto can move around for or size four characters, but he's also sixth threat. Uh, Rogue can do it, and that's good value that she can do it. Um, she's four threat. Uh, Captain Marvel can, yeah, Captain Marvel can do it. But there's not like, unless you're paying a crazy premium, there's not a lot of characters that can do that. So, like, some factions are having trouble. Uh, Hulkbuster can do it, but he's sixth threat, right? So you have to have, like, these big points investments. And I feel like any time that you can get a size four... And the fact that she can fucking throw unlimited is nuts to me. Like, that's like, so I love good. her at four. My only issue yeah. is, like, exactly what you're saying right now. If you're already going to five, I think you can get way better... And just take a six. I just think at that point you just take a six. Yeah, but like that downgrading one is so uh, huge though. The yeah, but going from so say you're playing a five and a four, playing a six and a three, because those sixes are, I, in my opinion, all the ones you named are going to be miles better than she is in most every scenario. Yeah, but she's a four pointer. I mean, like you. But that's the thing. We're not. We're not. I, no, we're not playing her as a four. This is not as a four. Everything we're talking about is she's got to be a five, right? No, no, no. I'm yeah. like there, and there are. Uh, you can take her as like a four, like in affiliations that can get her power. You can take her as a four. So like, as a four, her having like the size four put like whether or not you have the power stone doesn't change the fact that I, she can push yeah, size I, four characters. Yeah, I, I agree. I think she's really good in those affiliations. I thought you were talking about her with the power stone, so I, I, I do apologize. No, just as a whole, like with her package, she can baseline push a size four character which is nuts and then she's probably going to get off like at least to everything dies a game i guess probably i think that's pretty guaranteed that you can probably get off two of those every game so just two chances to throw a size a dormammu is it's just nuts to me especially on like a size four character that's if you don't take the power stone i think if you take the power stone it's guaranteed that you get off two of those a turn and probably more. Like, I think after round one, you are you can probably get off and everything dies every single round with the Power Stone. Unless she dies. We'll just, we'll just have, well, when she comes out, we'll just play a whole gauntlet with her and, like, all kinds of affiliations. And... I'm sure that she will probably get played. <laughs> like, I think everybody wants to try her out at least once, right? So, yeah. I, that's, that's the only thing. Like I said, I, I think that's the one thing... I think the, our biggest difference is I, I could literally see her just being one of those models that's really good, but not, like, good enough. That's and fair. Be, be, just being, it comes back to, I think, I it's just the, there's a lot of models that are just restricted on what they're affiliated in, and I feel like sometimes we just forget about their existence. That's fair. Well, these are, these are all good hot takes. Only time will tell, like, how well she actually does, so... Uh, overall, though, I think that they did a good job with her. I think that she's, you know, thematic. I think that her kit seems fun. So even if she does get kind of lost through the just ocean of plastic that we now have for this game, I think that she's still overall really to kind of and get if, excited about. So yeah, and if she gets an affiliation card, I I, I love that. Like that's yeah that. That, like I said, I reserve that. I reserve the right to change my opinion if that if we find that out because yep. that I would play a list and just play six seventeens and just hope I always play seventeen because that seventeen is disgusting. Yep. All right. Well, uh, what are we looking at for comics, Brad? 
Oh, um, I wasn't quite ready for that. Give me just a second. Okay. So, uh, uh, what? Did you have something to say? I was gonna. I was gonna vamp, but it's no. I'm good. Right. I'm good. I'm good. I just had laid my phone down, so I wasn't quite ready. So I have two suggestions here, um, both of which I've read this time, so that's unusual. Uh, the first one is Avengers No Surrender, which is Avengers 675 through 690. Uh, it's written by Mark Wade, Al Ewing, Jim Zub, uh, Art Pepe Larraz, Who's like the best in the business? Uh, Kim Yacinto? Jacinto? I don't know. And Paco Medino. Um, three teams of Avengers, one of them led by Rogue, take on um, the Grandmaster's Lethal Legion and the Challenger's Black Order. So the Grandmaster and the Challenger are. Uh, big like cosmic things uh, I don't know one of them's related to uh, the collector and them but I don't know which one I do uh, like the collector the grandmaster might have been what's his name in Thor Ragnarok magnificent oh uh- God, what's that actor's name? Jeff Goldblum. I, I'm blanking Jeff on Goldblum. Jeff yeah. Goldblum. Oh my god! How do you both <laughs> yeah. blank on Jeff Goldblum? You're both. I don't know. I don't know. So that might have been Jeff Goldblum's character, the Grandmaster. Um, but uh, Grandmaster puts together the Lethal Legion. Most of those characters are new, and they're pretty cool. Like there's like this floating octopus dude that has like mental powers and stuff, and then the Challenger leads this Black Order team, and it's the, uh, what is it, six Black Order members that aren't Thanos? Six! Uh, one, two, three, okay, that's right, that is six. I thought there was one that I hadn't thought of, and I got excited, because I thought maybe there's going to be another one. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. I the mathed six it out. members yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. of the Black Order. <clears throat> and, eight. There's uh, not eight if you count Gamora and Nebula, but, yeah, you, you've, we've got wow. our... Don't okay. expect more. Okay, and um, so they're doing this big competition because they're both characters about competitions. And there's these like pyramid things all over the world, and they're trying to claim it. And the Avengers are just trying to stop them because that's what the Avengers do. Uh, sure. And so uh, it's. It's good. It's long, but it, if you read it in one sitting, like it doesn't take that long to read. Like it goes pretty fast. There's a lot of cool characters in there. There's definitely characters in there that you have never heard of. Um, and then some characters you have. And it's just, it's a cool fight all over the world. Um, one of the only Avenger stories I've actually enjoyed that I've read. So, wow, that's a hot take. I haven't uh, read a lot of comics, as you know, but uh, I actually did see Black Swan in uh, Infinity. Yeah, I I almost talked about that one, but from what I could tell, she's barely in she's it. She's not really in it. I I think that there's a couple pan- panels where like Beast teaches her Latin, <laughs> so like she's just hanging out in a room. So, so I knew that. I knew that she was from a different universe, but I did not realize until I did my research for this bit right now that she's actually from the earth of her alternate universe. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think I I did not know that. Um, so their earth must be very different than any earth we're familiar with. I did, however, pick, um, a story by Jonathan Hickman who wrote infinity. Uh, Secret Wars, the 2015 version, uh, Jonathan Hickman and Asad Rubik, who um, I've been a big fan of Asad Rubik's art since uh, Future Sight. So Brandon can help me out here. There was a giant, a red giant in Future Sight. 
Red Giant and Future Sight. Yeah. And it, the artwork, you're like, it's drawn from like ground level looking up at him. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Give me just a second. Yeah, I should have looked up that card, but when I made this, I wasn't sure I was even going to be on the episode. So while Brandon's looking that up, uh, I've been a fan of Asad Rubik's art since I saw that card. It was one of his early works. He is a phenomenal artist. Anyway, this story, uh, it's a great writer uh, and a great artist. Come together to tell um, a story that changes everything in the Marvel Universe. This is, so DC has this big thing where they like reset their universes every couple years and they usually restart it from scratch. This was like Marvel's one time only soft reset. They didn't reset everything from scratch, but they kind of like took things back to basics after this. What was Uh, the artist's name? Asad Rubik. E S A D. R I B I C. Um, Boyd Win Intimidator. What what's the rules on that card? Uh, cowards can't block warriors. Yes. I will send it in the chat if uh, Jared wants to pull up the link and show the show the world what we're talking about, or he could just search it, its name. But I sent the link. Yep. Yeah. That's I, I could picture it. I just could not think of its name, and for good reason because that's not a uh, not so much a normal name. Yes, love that art. It's only uh, it's only six cents right now for all you collectors out there. I uh, I definitely put that card in a deck for copies. Six cents um, plus a dollar ninety nine shipping. Oh my you. god! Uh, with a bunch of, I built a warrior deck just so I could play that card because I like the art. Anyway, so in this uh, in this series that is very relevant, if you've gone to any recent movies, uh, the six one six is uh, the barriers between realities has thinned, and there's an incursion going on that's going to destroy the reality and um, doom. Uh, gets the power of a god and takes pieces of the different universes that are collapsing and builds this thing called uh, Battle World. And the people in Battle World have only ever known Battle World. They did not know about the world that came before. And uh, the main series is... I want to say eight issues. I didn't write this down. But um, it's got Black Swan in, like all the way through the story. Uh, so it's one of the times she's appeared the most. Uh, if you like the main series, you want to learn more about the world, they put out so many, many series around this. Like four issues of like different pieces of Battle World where it's basically alternate universe stories. Um, So, like, if you like the 90s X-Men cartoon, Mm -hmm. well, that's one of the places that they wrote a series about. Okay. And um, everything in that world, because each universe is just a little piece now. So everything goes on in the mall on uh, the 90s X-Men world. Okay. So, um, it's a it's a cool series. Uh, there's speculation that this might be the next big event that they are building towards because incursions were recently mentioned in a Marvel property, but I don't know about all that. All right. Well, uh, does anyone else have anything they want to talk about in regards to Black Swan? Yes, actually, uh, I have a recommendation. Oh, uh, so goodness. Black Swan is from a different universe. So I have a movie recommendation, and that is a movie by Darren Aronofsky starring Natalie Portman. I watched it relatively recently, and it's a very good movie about 
a descent into madness based upon a dancing competition, and it's called Black Swan. And I <laughs> highly recommend. <laughs> I was wondering where it was going, then I realized what was oh, happening. Oh, yeah, I knew, I knew exactly where he was going with that one. Ugh. Natalie Portman definitely gave it away a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but I like it. Maybe in that alternate universe, she's actually like an A-plus model, like uh, you guys think she is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, we're, uh, she's, I'm going to shove her down your throat. When, when <laughs> I said, Brandon, my I take is her... either going to age great or so bad like there's no in between on my take like it's gonna age it's gonna age like the finest wine or it's gonna age like an I, apple in the sun brandon, absolutely... we didn't... brandon we did not all give her an a that's true, that's true. i love I the way that... b plus i love the way that fred said that to you he was like laughing but it's like shaking his head like shucks he's like ha, i'm gonna shove her down your throat <laughs> like <laughs> was, i love it i love it all right, guys. Uh, well, that thank you for joining us. Uh, let us know uh, if you're watching this on YouTube. Let us know in the comments what you guys think of Black Swan. What would you rate her? Uh, just kind of on the letter scale that we use. Uh, yeah, let us know what you think about her kit. Uh, and if you're not listening to the full podcast, you should because we offer you get more fred you, you get more yeah, yeah that, there you go I, I like i was struggling to come up with why you would listen to it but yeah you get more fred you get more fred you get a lot more fred you get Woo! <laughs> all right. you can't really beat getting more fred to be fair all right uh yeah thank you for joining us we'll see you guys next week